let's take a look at diffraction and interference of waves. So diffraction is the bending of waves as they pass near the edge of an obstacle. And you can look pretty deeply into diffraction. There's a lot of mathematics that can be applied and used to describe it, but we're going to look at it qualitatively. So let's imagine that you have waves where there are aligned vertical wave fronts and the ray is going to be pointing to the right and it's going to encounter two obstacles, two walls with a gap between them. So diffraction is the bending of the waves as they pass near this obstacle. So the waves that just go through the middle of that gap, they're just going to pass on straight through pretty unaffected. But the waves that pass near the edge of the obstacle, they will bend. And they bend in this way. They bend sort of around the obstacle. And where they've bent, where they've been diffracted greatly, there the intensity is going to be relatively low. Okay, let's look at a different example. Let's say that we have these vertically aligned wave fronts and the wave is moving to the right. And then we only have one wall. Well, the waves, or the wave fronts, which pass away from the wall, not near the wall, but over in the lower location here, they're just going to pass through as though they're normal. But those that pass near the obstacle will be bent. They'll be bent like this. And in that region where they were bent, where they diffracted, the intensity will be quite a bit lower. And now let's look at another, a third example. Let's say that I just have this little bit of wall right here and the waves are coming in. Well, the waves which are not near the wall will just pass straight on through, but the waves that pass near the wall will be bent. They'll be diffracted around the edge. Now diffraction is a pretty important phenomenon. It shows up a lot in physics. But one way that you can see its importance is imagine that these are sound waves that we're worried about. And imagine you're standing on one side of the wall. So the sound waves are coming along and you're on the back side of the wall. So if you look at this, you might, if you didn't know about diffraction, you might think that the waves will encounter the obstacle and they'll just be stopped. They cannot pass through the obstacle, so the waves won't get to the person standing behind the wall. But if you've ever stood behind a wall, you can hear the things that are happening on the other side. The sound waves do get to you. And one of the ways that they get to you is by diffraction. They'll diffract around that edge of the boundary and they'll reach you. They'll be somewhat weakened, but they'll still reach you and you would still be able to hear what's going on. And there are many things that affect diffraction, but one thing is that you would get the strongest diffraction effect, so the strongest bending of the waves, when the opening that the waves pass through is about as large as the wavelength of the waves. And another situation where you can observe this happening is in breakwaters. So breakwaters are often set up, they're these walls uh, in the water near harbors often. And if you have waves coming in, then the little apertures where the ships would pass through cause diffraction to happen. Now let's take a look at interference. Interference refers to the interaction of waves at a location from two or more different sources. Constructive interference is the particular type of interference when waves combine to make a wave of larger amplitude. So it's two waves coming together to make a bigger wave at a certain location. Destructive interference refers to two waves combining at a location to make a wave of smaller amplitude. And usually destructive interference specifically refers to two waves coming together to cancel each other out to make a wave of zero amplitude. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say that we have two coherent sources of waves. And coherent means that the two sources are vibrating or oscillating in phase, sending out waves with the same wavelength. So let's call those two sources Piglet and Winston. So Piglet and Winston are coherent sources. And let's consider a point A, which is equidistant from Piglet and Winston. Okay, well if the two sources are coherent, then that means if, let's say, Piglet is emitting some a wave and a crest 
is coming out of Piglet at that moment, then at Winston, a crest is also coming out. All right. And let's just say that A is two wavelengths away from Piglet and from Winston. So if a crest is coming out of Piglet and A is two wavelengths away, then that means a crest is arriving at A from Piglet. And Winston is sending out a wave with a crest, and so two wavelengths away, a crest is also arriving at A. So at A, we're getting a crest from Piglet and a crest from Winston. So here we get constructive interference. Those two crests are arriving at A. They add together to make a bigger crest. That's constructive interference. Now let's consider a point B. And at B, well, let's say that B is one and a half wavelengths away from Piglet and two wavelengths away from Winston. Well, if Piglet is sending out a crest at that moment, then that means, well, one and a half wavelengths away, a trough is arriving at B from Piglet. And Winston is sending out a crest, and two wavelengths away at B, a crest is being received from Winston at B. So at B, we're receiving a trough from Piglet and a crest from Winston. So at that location, we would get destructive interference because the crest and the trough will partially cancel each other out. That's destructive interference. Now, I'm not going to prove this right now, but it turns out that whether you get constructive or destructive interference depends on something called the path difference. The path difference is simply the difference in the paths. So for instance, at A, A was equidistant from both Piglet and Winston. So the length of the path to Piglet and the length of the path to Winston is the same at point A. So the path difference at A is zero. At B, the path difference, well, let's see, the distance to Piglet was one and a half wavelengths and the distance to Winston was two wavelengths. So the path difference there is two wavelengths minus one and a half wavelengths, so half of a wavelength. Okay. It turns out that if the path difference at a location is equal to n times lambda, where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, or any other integer, then we get constructive interference at that location. If the path difference is equal to n plus 1 half times lambda, where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, or any other integer, then we get destructive interference at that location. So those are the conditions for constructive and destructive interference at a location. And the last thing we will look at is something called double slit interference. And in double slit interference, we simply have a wave that's passing through two slits. And the distance between the slits we will call small d. And when we have that, well, let's say that the wave passes through those two little slits. Well, over here we're going to have a screen. We often think about this in the situation where light is passing through the two slits. So we're going to have a screen over here where the light reaches and makes a pattern. On the screen, whether or not we get constructive or destructive interference will depend on the path difference. And with a little bit of math, and we won't do all the math, uh, with a little bit of math, we can get an expression for where we would get constructive interference on that screen. And if this is light that we're talking about, constructive interference means that we would get a bright spot, right? The waves come together to constructively interfere. If it's light waves, we'll get a bright spot. The locations where you get a bright spot on this screen are given by S is equal to N lambda capital D over small d. And let's figure out what all that means. S is the distance between the midpoint on the screen and the location of the bright spot. N is an integer, 0, 1, 2, so on and so on. Lambda is the wavelength of the wave. Capital D is the distance between the slits and the screen. And small d is the distance between the slits. Okay. So that tells you the location of all of the bright spots. We can also get another equation, which is the one that you get in your data booklet, 
which is s is equal to lambda d over d. That equation tells you the distance between the bright spots on the screen, the distance between the locations of constructive interference on that screen.